But I'll do it. What you've got to say is, Lord, give me a vision. Give me a vision, your vision. And I'll step out in faith and do it. And I know, God, that when I do, that if I do what you tell me to do, you will supply every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So if you get a vision, don't worry about the money. I mean, the money will come if, you're, if you've got a vision from God. If you commit to the vision, that's another thing. You can't just get a little dream and then say, well, if it's easy, if it happens overnight, then I'll do it. How many know, know that any great thing that God's ever done didn't just happen with an easy overnight? Well, I'll give it a little effort. If nothing happens, I'm done with it. You can't do that. You've got to be committed. Commitment is a, is a dirty word in, the, in, in some people's mind, but, but, but I know you all don't feel that way, so God bless you. Praise the Lord. You're here every week, and I appreciate you that from that point every week that you can be. People in the world say, show me the money. God says, put me in my will first and see how greatly I can bless you. The money and the, every supply, every need will come. Praise God. Last scripture here says, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Think about this being a good scripture for your great adventure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Friends, you've got to have, uh, this is a great prayer chapter. You need to read the whole chapter of Ephesians chapter 3 because it's a prayer for the saints there that Paul's praying. But it's, verse 20 especially says that God can do infinitely more. God can do infinitely more than all we could ask or even imagine. Give me a break, folks. God's a big God. Amen. When we say we want to do things, that was paid for cash before it ever got here. We're fine with our new lighting. Our radio bills are paid on time every month. Every utility bill, it's all paid on time and that Pastor Mike even gets a paycheck. The reason I say all that is why limit God? If your whole life is about Psalm 78 talked about how Israel uh, limited the God limited, limited God. I, forgot, I wish I had the quote right in front of me here but Psalm 78 it talks about how the people of Israel uh, they turned their back on God and they limited the God of Israel. They limited the God of Israel. You, you say, oh, no, no, no. And in fact, sometimes people will say, well, if he wants to do it, he's just going to do it. So if he don't do it, I guess he didn't want to do it. Well, no, sometimes he wants to do it, but he wants somebody to believe him. Amen. That's right. Somebody to invest a little something. Somebody to say, Lord, I'm not going to just make it easy. I'm going to put my life on the line here, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to stake everything that I have and everything that, everything that I am and everything that I have on you coming through and being faithful. I'm going to step out of this little box, get out of the box, friends. When you put God in the box, you're putting yourself in a box. You know that, right? When you put God in the box, you're putting yourself in a box. And I think I want to climb out of that. I saw <laughs> Rod Parsley one time, I saw him make a little illustration in one of his messages. He says, look at this. That's me coming out of the box. <laughs> you can, you can, you can, God can, God will. Friends, you've got to believe God. You've got to have big faith. When we put God in a little box, we put ourselves in a little box. Hallelujah. Don't do that. His ability is more than we can imagine. Give us our, this day our daily bread is a wonderful thing to pray and believe God for. But you can believe for more than just your daily bread. And believe him for that, absolutely. But go beyond that and say, Lord, I believe you that I'm going to do more than just have enough food to get me through the day. Lord, I'm going to believe that as your word says that you came that we might have life and life more abundantly, that I believe that's for me. And Lord, it's not for me so I can swim in the gravy, but so I can ladle some of that gravy out on somebody else who's dry. And needs, and needs a little help and a little love and a little encouragement. Maybe needs me to shuffle a little money over them or, or bag of groceries over to these people or, or a tank of gas to these people over here or to help my church to, to expand its outreach or help pay for some things we're doing to update our church. Whatever it might be that God puts on your heart by the prosperity that He's giving you. Give us this day our daily bread and of course Father will do that. But He wants you to ask bigger than that. Oh. <sighs> 
Daily bread's good. It's, you know, I like to eat. <laughs> I like to eat. But he wants me to be more concerned about more than just my daily bread. He wants you to ask bigger. If he's a big God, ask, him big, ask for big things. Believe for big things. And when it gets rough, don't say, well, God is not in it because it's, it's rough. Friends, <laughs> oh my goodness. There are so many things that people have done that, uh, at the end of the process were a great testimony to the greatness of God. But somewhere along the way was that moment when it looked like this is hard. And sure, God's going to come through for you. Did that dream really come from God? Did that vision really come from the Lord? Or should we just kind of just pull back and take it easy and, and, and get out of the land of risk and go into the place of safety? He wants you to ask bigger. He's able to even do willing and even, he's able and even willing to do big things for his great glory through humble, willing vessels. You think about it when the, Jesus, the leper approached Jesus and said, I know you can if you want to. I know you can heal me if you want to, Lord, if you're willing. And Jesus said, I'm willing. And then he, and he pre pre proceeded to demonstrate his will by healing the man. Friends, God is willing to do great things in your life. Hallelujah. Just don't put God in a little box and put ourselves in that little box. The great adventure leaves small thinking and safe spaces where you hide to come out into that new territory. There's something adventurous about a young man. Something kind of wild in a lot of little boys. And there's this thing God put in them. To be a man to strike out and conquer, to explore new territories, and go out and face the risks, and say, uh, forget about the risk, I'm going to come out here and do it. Don't, honey, don't, just be quiet, sit, sit still, you might get hurt. And wait a minute, and the little boy says, man, I, I can't live that kind of life, I want some adventure. Well, I hope you children of God, I hope you sons and daughters of God feel the same way. That when the devil says, shut up, sit down, be quiet, don't speak anything, it'll put you at risk. Don't try anything new that you say, shut up, devil. I'm not going to live that kind of life. I'm going to get up. And I'm going to do the big thing God's calling me to do. Amen? Anybody here with me? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A big God, a big dream. A wide horizon of possibilities. A hearing heart that becomes certain about hearing and following God out of the boat and out of the box. Hallelujah. Give God the glory with your life and step out in faith. And friends, remember these scriptures I shared with you. If you had anybody ever wants a copy of my outlines, I'll give them to you. But these are some scriptures that are going to help you in your great adventure. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we're on a great adventure, and it's called a walk of faith. It's called not, not walking by feelings or not walking by sight, but walking by faith. And Lord, you're, you, Jesus, when you thought, I think about what you did. You did a lot of risky things, Lord. You were born in a manger with a bunch of animals around you. And, and uh, you weren't born in the palace where your palace guards could protect the young king. You were, you were born in a place where people wanted to uh, eventually try to kill you, Jesus. You came and you, you took the risk and you stepped out of the safety and the glory and the ease and the comfort of heaven so you could come among us and live this life. So you could conquer all the things that try to face us down. You said in the world, you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And what this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. So Lord, we're more than conquerors. And we're the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And Lord, and in all of this, we're going to take the great adventure of faith. Lord, I pray that when you speak to our hearts, we're going to say, in Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name, I will obey you. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I want you to think about this, friends, every minute, for a minute. While you're, you're, you're prayerful right now in the presence of God. If there's something that the Lord has been putting on your heart, or just a general sense of, I got to break out of the box. I got to have an adventure. I, my life needs to be exciting. <laughs> and, and you step out and you believe God and you obey God. Sometimes it's by going somewhere. Sometimes it's by, by staying put where you are and saying, I'm going to make this thing work. The devil tell me it can't work. Tell us to tell me it can't work. But I'm going to make it work. And whatever it might be, friends, in Jesus' name. Somebody here today, in Jesus' name, stand to your feet if you would with me, kind of quietly and prayerfully.